Hi, my name's Callum Dix and you're joining me today at Tunnel Barn Farm. I've sat on peg one on Canal Lake. Now I'm gonna take you through my setup, my rig, to hopefully maximize the amount of F1s you catch in the winter months. Right guys, my setup. First of all, the pole I'm using is the Mava Signature Pro 800. Now this pole fills my requirements perfectly. The, most, the best thing about it for me is how stiff it is. You can fish it at lengths at 14, 16 meters, and when you're getting little tiny bites from these F1s, it's really responsive. You don't want a pole with a lot of lag after you strike. You want it to be really responsive as quick as what you strike, you want the pole to lift. I'm also using it with a short number four section and a short top kit. What this does is stiffen the pole up even more. I use quite a big kinder pot, with sometimes can be full of maggots, so it adds quite a lot of weight to the pole. Using a short number four and a short top kit really does stiffen everything up. The elastic I'm using is a six to nine dual core pro. Now this elastic is so perfect in the winter. It's got a bit of backbone. If you do look a carp in the area that I'm sat today, there is an odd carp, but it's still plenty soft enough to catch some smaller F1s or even maybe some rotor skimmers. Put that through the short top kit and it does really work fantastic. The pot itself is quite a big pot. It can hold maybe 100 to 150 maggots with a sprinkle lid on top. That's really important because when you're fishing in the winter, what I want to do is lift and drop, sprinkle 10 or 12 maggots in, see if I can catch a fish. If not, sprinkle another 10 in and repeat the process. Really important that you get the right pots. I've already mentioned the elastic six to nine dual core. I don't actually use Dacrons itself. I actually just tie a bead straight onto the elastic. I prefer this when using back shots. The actual rig itself, the main line is 0.12. Now that's really important for me because I try and use the lightest float possible. If you try and use a really light float, maybe a four by eight or four by 10 with thick main line, they just don't seem to work right. There's not enough shot on the line to make it sink. Using the O12 MVR, I can use a 0.5 and 0.15 float and it just seems to settle and work perfectly. That's really important in the winter months. The shotting pattern, I've actually, the last probably month have changed totally what I used to do. I know these floats that I'm using today take eight number 12 shot. And what I used to do is just string them out over a four inch gap, very basic, very shirt button style. I've actually changed totally what I'm doing now. I still want 50% of the shot right near the hook. So spaced out three inches at a part. But what I've actually done now is spaced the top four shots, so 50% of my shot, over the area of the rest of the rig with the last shot right underneath the float. Now this just makes the whole rig really stable. What I found, when you just had all your shot just spaced out at the bottom, when you laid your rig in, there was a delay from where the shot was sinking and the float was catching up. Shot on it like this with 50% of your shot near the float and 50% below, the whole time the rig is settling, you felt I really feel like I'm in contact with the rig and everything's really finesse and you see every last little bite. One of the most important things about the rig is the float I'm using. This is the MVR Finesse 6. I've chose to use the 0.15 today because I'm fishing in 40 inches of water. Now that seems about right for me. I, my middle line is about five foot, so I've gone for the 0.2 float. The bristles on them are 1.2 mil hollow plastic, which is so important in the winter because the light can be very difficult at times with features on the far bank and sunlight and the sun's very low at this time of the year. So it's important that you use a bristle that you can see. So a 1.2 hollow bristle is very important. The body itself is slimline. This time of year, what you'll find is you'll be missing lots of bites. So you don't want a float that's a lot has lots of resistance when you're lifting it out of the water. A very slim line float 
is perfect and a carbon stem that's also really important because you want the float and your rig to settle as slow as possible a wire stem will just kick it down a little bit too quick really important it's a great float for this type of fishing any type of baits you can use it on bread you can use it on maggots or even pellets now the hook length itself is five inches in length which is a great length for this time of year I've been using that everywhere three foot of water five foot of water even more that length just seems to be nice you've got the top shot right at the top of the hook length that just keeps me in contact with the fish the, the hook length itself mainly I would use 010 um, but I actually fished a winter pairs match here the other day and what the first day when we were fishing it was really difficult The fish it was cold and the fish didn't really didn't seem to want to feed I actually swapped down to an 08 hook length and it made a massive difference to a size 20 sharp maggot hook But that's the rig itself Really finesse when you're dropping it in you're staying in contact with the hook and the shot the whole time Just a great all-round finesse rig perfect for this time of year for F1s. Now you've seen the setup of the rigs, I just want to talk to you a little bit about baits itself. Over the last three or four months I've been fishing here at Tunnel pretty much every weekend and it's really been amazing how the baits have changed through the winter months and how the temperatures changed. We've started off using pellets when it was a little bit warmer and we've come up to now when it's gone a little bit colder near December time and maggots and bread has been the bait for us. Today I've just used maggots I've started up the bank and I've started across using maggots and also if this was a match today I'd think about having a line down the middle. It's really interesting how I've been feeding it as well. Down the middle where it's a little bit deeper what I've been trying to do is prime the lime up. I've been using my hand, I've been throwing maggots most of the day whilst I'm not fishing it but across really has been all about kinder pot and maggots. I'm using a sprinkle lid kinder pot. This pot itself will take about 100 maggots. And the key has been to go in, start fishing, tap in 10 to 15 maggots, try and catch a fish. If not, repeat the process. Have it do it three or four times. If you don't catch a fish, is to move spots. The other day when we were fishing, I started in three foot of water, 36 inches, started dead in front of me. I've caught a few fish dead in front of me, moved two meters, done the same again, and I spent the whole of the match just tapping maggots in down my peg. That was quite a shallow, narrow peg. In these pegs like today, where it's quite wide, the middle line can come good late on. But fishing across, just tapping in maggots, 10 or 12 at a time, and repeating the process really has been boss. So that's my general way I'll be thinking if I was to approach a match here now at Tunnel, to maybe start on bread, but look to fish with maggots, with a sprinkle lid, and throwing them throughout the match. All right, we've had a load of bikes up the bank, fishing to that grass and overhanging cover. Plumbed up is, I found 40 inches of water, which is a great depth for this time of year, and the depth I've been catching most of my fishing. Just gonna lay my rig in, tap in 10 to 12 maggots, and then flip my rig in again and try and get my hook bait land in at a similar time to my loose bait. Just flick the rig out and drop the back shot down into the water and that keeps the float dead still, which is really important in the winter. You just gotta try and keep your float as still as possible. There you go, straight away. Just nice and still, spool in nice and slowly. A bite straight away. They tend to be a bit smaller, the F1s up here, up the bank. But if you can cut them as quick as that, you're gonna put a great weight together. Another great immaculate F1. And there you go, guys. Another great day at Tunnel Barn. I hope some of the tips that I've given you really pays off. Get yourself on the bank, fish nice and fine, nice and finesse. You can catch plenty of fish like this.